So at this point, we've created a, an HTML file. Question? It's locked. It's locked? Yeah, Okay, the, the password is LAB. <laughs> Okay, so we've created this um, uh, HTML document, which will now be what we use to access the database. Let's talk then about working with the, with the JSON structure, the JSON database. Let's, um, we are going to do this in a separate file. It's a separate file to have a, that will have a list of all of our data. Let's practice this a little bit. So. Let's go to File, New, File Menu, New, and then File, Save As. I'm going to save it in the same folder, the same folder as our current project, and I'm going to call it um, J JSON, JSON Test 00.json. I don't think we've got JSON in the Save As types, but that's okay. Java, JavaScript, whatever. So the extension is .json. JSON. So save it as whatever. There is JSON? Uh, I don't see it on mine. It's the last one, very last one. Mine says, mine says YAML. You might have a you might have a m more modern version of of the Notepad. Mine's not updated. Okay, I guess if yours says JSON down there, go ahead and select it and save it. All right, so we've got a file JSON test zero zero dot JSON whatever. We've got a file. We've got a, uh, a file that will have our, our data. And the big thing about this is that this is a collection of information. The way we, the way the syntax of it is we have to start with an open curly brace, space close curly brace. Everything exists between the two curly braces. <coughs> Note here, there are no comments in JSON. You cannot write comments in JSON. You can kind of do it, but for all intents and purposes, no. You can't write comments in JSON. The data is the data. This file is full of the data. There's nothing else in it. Just data, not comments. You could create a field of comments and put comments there. But there's no <laughs> comments in, there's no like tag for comments. So let's say it that way. I'm going to divide this up actually into three lines, just to split it up like that. That's valid. So this Whenever you see any file or any, any data and it's surrounded only in curly brackets, that's most likely JSON. So inside of it then, here's where we create our structure, our schema for our database, meaning this database will hold this data, and it will hold it perhaps in this type. So it's a, it's a key and a value pair. So let's say we've got a database where we're holding information of you know our users let's say we we're building a social media app and we want to store a database of our users data so let's do a couple of, of quotes here one field would be for example user ID it can be uppercase it can be lowercase doesn't matter but I'm just writing it as UID lowercase one of the fields is, is user IDs, where I'm, sa I'm saving user IDs. And so um, after that, space colon, this technically doesn't have to have a space, but I put a space there for readability, space quotes. OK, let's think of a user ID. So my user ID and on a lot of my social media is VM Campos. So there's one item in the database. This is a user, VM Campos. At the end, let's add a comma, enter. We're going to add another user ID. Let's think of another one. Cool guy 99. Let's add another one, comma. UID, colon, John dot Smith. Um, you know, 
wrong. 44. So I'm just putting in a few here. In different ways. I'm just showing you this can store anything. Yes, sorry. Commas. You do need to put commas separating all of these entries in the database except for the last one. Can you basically say and this one? Yes, we can think of the commas as ands. This user and then this user and then this one and this one and this one. Final user, no terminating comma. It just ends. Now, um, that's, that's JSON right there, keys and values. <coughs> that can get and will get more complex because this is a collection of data and we can save, actually we can say, you can think about it as an, as an array. We didn't talk really too much in this class about arrays, but an array is a variable that holds many variables. So we can put a JavaScript object in a JavaScript object. We'll see that in a moment. That's how we're going to do our project. So basically, we can have something equals or colon a whole Java, a whole JSON object there. That's full of more deeper levels of data. We're going to do that in a moment, but let's wrap our head around something basic like this. So as I said, there's no comments here. So what I'm going to write below here is actually not valid. I shouldn't write it in my document, but I need, it to, need to show it to you. So actually what I'll do... I'll open a brand new empty document and move it to the other view. So I'm just going to show you two things. One's in one, one's in one screen just to <coughs> show you what I want to say, and then this is the data. Because this should only include your data, not you know, not comments. And what I want to say, yes. How did you do that? I mean, this if you right click a tab, then you can uh, move to other view. So I created a new file. And then I did right-click, move to other view. So if I was going to show this data in my HTML file, I'm just going to strip away all the extra stuff. But if I wanted to show some of this data, what I would be writing is UID square brackets 0. And that would, and that would pull the data that's in the 0 width ID. We are counting from 0 here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So with a bunch of other code, basically I could then say, give me the data in the 0 with ID. So give me v comp VM Compost on screen. It's all integer based. It's all whole numbers here. You're never going to have a 1.7. It's all whole numbers. So if I wanted to load up the fifth record, it would be like that. So the notation to, to you know look inside that field of UIDs would be simply reference it reference its its um, its index number. So zero, one, two, three, four. That would show up one, two, three guy, one, two, three, seven guy on screen. Obviously, that's not any sort of complete code, but I'm just showing you that that's how we would look at the data. Let's get more complex here because right now this is a database that is only holding user IDs. I actually want to create a database that's going to hold user IDs, real names, passwords, bios, all of that stuff that makes up a real, a real profile. This, this is very, very basic. This is just to show you this is what JSON looks like. Let's actually rewrite this so that it really holds information in a real way. So let's actually, for the moment, delete all of that. We're going to rewrite it a little better. Let me go back to the beginning here. What I want to do is create again my, my, my field, so to speak. Let's say we call them usernames. All usernames will be listed here. Space colon square brackets, 
square brackets are for an array. And like I said, an array is like a variable that holds many variables. So here I want to hold many usernames. It's still JSON format. Curly <coughs> brackets, key, value. But that value can be huge attached to a key. Inside of the square brackets, I'll write curly brackets again. Because this is going to be a JSON object in a JSON object. I'm going to break this actually for readability. Like that. Also tab it, uh, I'll tab it over like that. So I have here a field in my database to store all my usernames. And here will be the usernames. This still needs a key value pair. So I'm going to make up, now I'll write UID colon VM Campos comma UID colon John. I'll just write two, but you get the idea. I'll write three. UID 37 guy. So now I've got a record in the database that is storing as many as many um, as many usernames as I want. This looks the same as before, but now this whole thing here is inside of one, one, one key in the database and all its values to then reference it in, in JavaScript. This time what I would do is say usernames, what position, and I've got three of them so far, so let's say two, dot UID which would be what, based on my data so far? John, I'm sorry. John, um, 337 guy. Oops. So here I'm saying, go to the index of 2 <coughs> in my username field and give me whatever ID is there. 0, 1, 2. 1337 guy. I didn't put quotes just to show you that that's the data that would come out of it. <coughs> but, um, yeah, it's a string, so yeah, quotes, but I'm just saying that's what's in that. This is not any sort of j valid JavaScript at the moment. I'm just saying that that's the data in that particular part of the database. So you see this. This is similar to that, but the, the actual index, <coughs> we're saying it up here, because username is full of a bunch of them over here. Give me the ID in that position, in that index. Let's say now, okay, usernames are one of the things that are being stored in my social network. So are full names. So now what I'm going to do is on line 6, add a comma, next line, quotes, full name, colon, an array full of a JavaScript object of full names. Uh, key value, comma, key value, comma, key value, comma. But this value is where all of the actual individual items are at. That's why this is inside of another JavaScript object, another JSON object. I'm going to break that up also just to make it look the same as the other one. And in there. <coughs> Let's say it's FN Victor Campos, comma, FN John Smith, comma, FN So, 
we've got now a collection of usernames and a collection of full names. We could do that in a collection of passwords and bios and everything. We invent a field and fill it with the values. So if I wanted to um, get John Smith's full name, full name, one dot fn. John Smith. <laughs> yes. So uh, from full name go to one zero one. John Smith. This is still following the same conventions as as um, what we uh, what I said at the very beginning. It's just that now we're getting complex. We're getting levels inside of levels. What's that? Um, for all intents and purposes, there isn't a limit, but for the technical side of things, you know, as much RAM as you've got and all of that, probably, you know, as deep as a 64-bit un, you know, unsigned integer, which is, what, 10 trillion? So there is a limit, technically-wise, but probably not really logistically-wise. And let's do a third thing. Let's say, okay, we've got username, we've got full name, and let's say their picture. We've got a picture, their user's picture. So this is one piece of data, comma, key value pair, comma. One key value pair, comma. This time I'm going to say this is um, uh, bio picture. Again, these can be named anything you want. I've been keeping it all lowercase, but they can be named anything you want, even with spaces and such, but I'm keeping it all lowercase and simple just so that I can reference it easily in my code. But I do want the quotes there, especially when they're strings. Uh, technically, these also could be numbers. So if I have, you know, uh, you know how you have, I'm employee seven of the company. So we could have user number. So user number in quotes. And then UN1, you know, the number, the, the, the value 1, the value 2, the value 3, without quotes. Because then with quotes is a string, without quotes is an actual number. You know, with actual numbers, I can organize them and add them and all of that. Yes? It seems doing it like this it would be easy to mix up data between lines and mix up, you know, the content of the records. Are there tricks or sometimes I use Excel to to help me with CSV files, but I don't know how you would use everything. They, off the top of my head, uh, and from what I've dealt with, I haven't had to get super complex to perhaps run into that issue. So I don't really have anything to really say about what can help you with it. I, you know, when I've worked on a project recently with, with some store that was selling uh, a bunch of products that had a bunch of variations and it was all in this format and I just had to you know pay attention and make sure I didn't put the wrong thing in the wrong comma so I'm sure there's ways to help you handle this much easier but I just did it the hard way I just did it the basic way that here's the data let me just mind it and that's it I guess the closest that I can say is using a good you know code editor because here at least it's gonna highlight where your data ends and starts, hopefully, and that kind of helps you, oh, okay, I'm still within here, and then just using these tabs here, this is all optional, this could go on one long line, but I'm breaking it up to, to readable chunks, I would love to put comments, technically there are no comments, but I am breaking it up with tabs and indents and using the code editor to guide me. So now I need to define my bio picture data. Again, it's the same sort of way that you've got now when you're going to show a bunch of data in one field. The convention is I use the square brackets. This is an array. And then inside of that, the curly brackets, because this is a JSON object. So I'll just break that again for readability. And then I'm going to say here, um, BP 
um, colon, and here, you know, some path. C backslash pictures backslash um, whatever the name of the, their picture. V C uh, bio dot ping, and then here another BP, and then another path. You see, it's very Can be anything here. This can contain any data. So in a sense, it's it's very uh, so the good thing about it is that you know it's it's very open and loose, but you could also say the bad thing, it's very open and loose. <laughs> because if you're using something like a traditional database, it, it says you have to put this and you have to use it like this. And there's an idiom, there's a schema for it all. And here, it's just text. It's up to you, really, to create it. And then it's up to the software to parse it, to process it. The good news is that Twitter does this, Flickr does this, Facebook does this, Internet Movie Database does this, Yahoo does this. All of the companies have done this. They create an API. Uh, they give you documentation that says, if you want to pull up any data from Twitter, write this code in JavaScript, and you'll get back this data. You know, this data. And then we would write our JavaScript to them and say, say, okay, give me the data from the seventh record, specifically the path, and then write more JavaScript to then show it on screen. That's what we're about to do in a moment. We're about to actually set it up. This is still a little practice. We're going to actually set it up with the data we want, you know, the social networks, the picture, and all of that. We're going to set up the database one more time, and then we're going to actually then pull from the database. But here I just wanted to show you this is JSON. It may have been a big mysterious thing, and it is, of course, more complex. We're still not there yet, but this is the basic concept of JSON, JavaScript object notation. There's nothing quite to do here at the moment to see if this quote-unquote works. Um, this is just a practice to think about keys and values. Key, colon, value. Key, colon, value. And here we have a deeper concept of, of more JSON objects in, a, in another JSON object. And this can be as deep as you want, as complex as you want. You might also know. Yes? Is there any particular reason why Tom is still on? Oh, because I, I was careless. Oh, That's why. Okay. Good, good eye there. Those should have had commas, yes, good eye, because I have used commas elsewhere, I forgot there. But yeah, this one key value pair, comma, another key value pair, comma, last one, so no comma. So yeah, there was, there's you know, no real way to test if this is working. I can't really run it in the browser. If I run it in the browser, it'll say, okay, great, here's your JSON data. <laughs> so what? So there's nothing really to do with it. That's where the rest of the you know, JavaScript and such comes in with uh, to actually pull it out of the database and do something with it or write it to the database. Any questions so far? Um, you might think, okay, well, how does it know that this bio picture is related to this username and related to that user ID. Technically it doesn't. It doesn't know really that it's related. It's not like a traditional relational database that you create a record and then everything that you add to that record is related to it. Technically it, it's not doing that. It only knows this because it's in the same sequence. Zero username is VM Campos. Zero full name is Victor Campos. Zero bio picture is Victor's picture. And then two is username 1337 guy, and two full name is Balthazar, and two bio picture is that cat picture on Yahoo Images. It just knows it because it's in that order when it was created, when it was saved, in that 
that itself also, if you've got experience in other kinds of databases, that's horrifying. You know, how does it know? How does it know? Well, it knows because it's in sequence. It's serialized. This is serialized data. Data in a sequence. And we'll be okay, because the modern web runs on this stuff. The modern web uses less and less MySQL, less and less, less Oracle, less and, and less FoxPro. Um, it uses more this, serialized flat data. That's what PouchDB is going to be. Um, that's what MongoDB is. That's what CouchDB is. All of these modern databases that that these modern, you know, hipster apps run on. They're all running a flat kind of uh, database, not the complex ones that need a server and all of that. Uh, is, it, is it almost like, like you have three tables with just one column? Is that kind of, or like two columns? The index and then the Well, you've got, um, you know, you've got th this, it, it does, you know, take your mind a little bit to wrap around it because I would want this and this and this to be all one record, but they're in different fields here. Right, that, that's what I'm saying, like it's like three tiny little, um, I'm sorry, three tables in a database, they're three tiny little tables in a database. Yeah. 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 <laughs> A table of usernames, a table of full names, and a table of bios, and then, and then the rest, columns. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds right. Sounds right. Yes. So, the um, to get another perspective on this, we'll go on in just a moment. Wikipedia. <laughs> No, that is a good perspective, but I mean here also looking it up on Wikipedia. Let's see what they say quickly. Jason, because I think I s remember seeing somewhere here that it actually sort of also says it. Uh, so see, there's there's exactly what we wrote. There's, uh, there's this object. Look at how they wrote it here. This is also in another way to, to write it in that Wait, we've... <laughs> What's that? That's a record. That feels more like a record, doesn't it? This one object has this first name. And last name is alive, age, address. So this is another way to write it as well. But then it's got a comma because then the next um, item is uh, phone numbers. And then phone numbers here, key and value. And that is another ob JavaScript object right there, another JSON object. And then after that, comma, children, spouse, null. Um, like I said, I think I thought I remember seeing something somewhere that sort of did mapped out a little bit like this is what it looks like in SQL and this is what it looks like in JSON. Maybe I saw it elsewhere. Uh, no SQL. SQL database provides a mechanism of storage and retrieval which is modeled in means other than the tabular relations used in relational databases. So history, here we go, key value, examples. So couch DB. Yeah, couch and pouch, which is synonymous, but these are different ways to, to sell, you know, objects in a database, uh, the key value. So this is just something to to look at further on. So none of these are saying, you know, the classic databases. It doesn't there's no Oracle here, there's no um, MySQL and SQL and such. But anyway, that's a little bedtime reading there. Uh, what we want to do here then is okay, if we're kind of getting an idea of how to how to work with this, let's um, Let's create the actual database that stores the information about our social networks and also takes into account the pictures that I've given you. So these pictures here, right? I, I want to create a database that stores the pictures and their websites and names and such so that then in the HTML code I can click and retrieve that. So this was just some practice. I'm going to create another file I'm going to create another empty file. File new. 
Let's save it. Let's save it as social.json. This is going to be our database of our social networks. So new file. Make sure you're saving it in the in the project folder here. Social.json. So we're going to start by building our, our database here. Um, this is going to be a list of social networks. So we'll have the social uh, key, colon. I'm going to do the square brackets here because this is going to be then encompassing all of the all of the all of the data so i'm going to break this i'm going to break this one actually like this and then in between what i'm going to do here is create the the javascript object and here kind of like the example in wikipedia in here then i'm going to create the record i'm going to create this is all of the data related to this one social network you can break it up into multiple lines, but this time just for to show it differently, I'm going to keep it in one line, and we're going to say, well, first of all, oops, first of all, we've got a graphic that defines the social network. We'll fill that in in a moment. Comma. We've got a description that defines the social network. Comma. We've got, you know, a name to display on screen. Comma. And a URL to use when you click. You're going to click on that, and then that's going to take you over to to the address. So here you can think of line 3 as one record. This will be Facebook, comma, another record. Twitter, comma, another record. Vine. A record is full of these various fields. It has the graphic field, the description field, the name field, the URL field. And all of those are encompassed in the social in the social um, uh, super set of, of, of the key because then we could separate that into uh, into more not only are we sit not only are we saving social media stuff but let's say we're saving user data so here is all of the social networks that a particular user is involved in and the next field, the next record, uh, would be the user. And it would have a subsection of first name, last name, date of birth, all of that. So let's say uh, if this is going to be my schema, I'm going to add a comma there at the end also, and I'm going to copy that two more times no comma on the third one. I'm going to list one social network, comma, another one, comma, another one, as many as I want. We'll start off with three just to see if it's working so far. The list of my social networks are defined like this. Graphic, description, name, URL. When you do this copy and paste, make sure that you've written it right the first time because you don't want to copy and paste it wrong two times. Key value comma, key value comma, key value comma, final one, no comma. But then there is a comma there when it's the next object until the terminating one. 
I have a list of in your in the network folder I have a collection that is of graphics for us pick one through nine pick one is YouTube and then vine and then Twitter so the graphic for pick one graphic here pick 01.jpg oh PNG so it's referencing that picture this file is in the same location as this picture so it'll work but imagine that that file was on a web server that'll work as well you know wherever the picture exists if we have a path to it we have stored we have it stored and referenced in the database in our case they're in that folder description well uh, this one is the YouTube so description for YouTube video sharing whatever description what is YouTube what's what describes YouTube whatever I'm just putting video sharing the name of that particular item and we could have put name as the very first field that's fine we could have put this however we want but I'm saying name uh, YouTube let me back up let's say the description is long form video because we've got some other video networks here Maybe long form video the name of uh, the name of that record then is um, YouTube and then a description at the end I mean a URL at the end address youtube.com slash anything here I'll just put in my company's address. We should be getting the idea here. I want to do something very similar for, for the second graphic and the third graphic. I'm going to just start off with three items so far. I want to build it up a little bit like this. Then I want to get back to the HTML to actually do something with that. This is just to define the database and the data. What do I do with it? It's coming up. But let's set this up for pick 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0, 03. So 0, 02 is Vine. Oops. So we'll have here pick 02.png. description is that is short form video. Vine is a social network where people share short videos. The name of this item is Vine in the URL. HTTP. Notice the full path, the full protocol vine.co, not .com, it's .co, and just a random channel on Vine. And then I'll do the third one, pick 03. And I'll say uh, 100 40 characters of wisdom at a time. <laughs> Twitter. And then the address. Some Twitter address. Um, SDC Victor Campos. So the actual data itself, um, these all of these fields can be anything you want, but except I, I would say except for the picture, because the, we have I have those pictures that I've given you, and if we want those pictures to appear, we do want to type pic01, 
pick 02, etc. If you wanted to go to any other website, go ahead, fill in whatever website. If you want any description, fill a description, fill a name, whatever you want. But for the pictures to display, you should use those names because that's what those things are called in the folder. If the name of the picture was twitter.jpg, then clearly I would put here twitter.jpg in the graphic field. At this point, um, double check your spelling. We can't quite test it yet. It's coming soon. But this is what I've got so far. Yes, we have other pictures and such. Uh, don't worry about it just yet. I want to focus now on the, on, the, uh, on the JavaScript of it. So double check that. Save it. Let's get over now back to our HTML file. Let's go to our HTML file into the JavaScript block, line 12. Okay, so our, JavaScript, our HTML file needs to access that JSON file. So we're going to write a little bit of JavaScript code here that we haven't seen before. This is a little bit of standard JavaScript to, for our file to basically access that JSON file, our database. So line 13, give yourself a new line 13 before the getSocial function. We'll create a variable. This uh, example, a variation of it, is in the book that I mentioned in the syllabus. I for forgot to look up what page. I brought it with me today, but I'll get it. But this is a variation. I'm getting this out of one of the chapters in the book, the recommended book. There's a whole chapter in JSON in there you might want to look at if you got the book, um, which is optional. And so this is this is basically that with a little few little twists here and there. We're using something here, XHR. This can be named anything. Of course, it's a variable that we're inventing. I forget exactly why we named it that, but that's uh, basically give us the data. This is going to store the data. This is going to give us the ability to get the data from the database. Equals new XML in capital letters, H capital, TTP lowercase, request capital R, Open, close, parentheses. We're saying here, um, let's create a new uh, request object. Let's basically connect. Let's give us the ability to connect to a file. Let's create this object um, and store all of its abilities, all of its methods and properties and such in this. So instead of us having to basically type this command over and over and over, we're going to use XHR. We're going to use this little short of, sort of shorthand to be able to do these commands of open the file, give me the URL. All of those commands, you know, to, to access the data, we're condensing them down into that variable XHR. Inside of the um, get social now, we're going to say, okay, they click the button. Let's do something with the data. I'm going to comment out line 15 because that was just to show that this worked, and it does. So we no longer need line 15. Line 16. We'll type xhr dot on load there's a method called on load we're saying if we were if we successfully tried to access the JSON file well let's do something with that data here's where we could also test if we didn't load it up if there was a broken connection if the file moved if it was renamed 
but here we're saying when there's a load, when we actually can connect to that JSON file. Let's say equals function. Open close parentheses, open curly brace, and I'll break that into two curly braces. The book does um, the book does have a little bit more of a check uh, about does the file exist or not. I'm going to assume it does because it's in the same folder. But this a variation of this can be used to access a JSON database on another server. You know, we've got our app on our device here, and then we're connecting to our to our Amazon server this way basically and then we're able to access all of that content uh, inside of this function we've got these curly braces we're going to um, let, me, let, let me back up to the line 17 in just a moment. This is where most of the real stuff will happen if we did successfully load up the data. Let's go past <coughs> the, uh, the curly brace of this function. Let's go past it, press enter, make sure we're still inside of the function of get social. Give yourself a new line 90. Make sure you're still in the, <coughs> in the get social. And so here we will say xhr dot open. Line thirteen is basically um, creating the the method to be able to creating the object to be able to access the data. Here we're actually now trying to open that file to get the data. And so that's what we're saying, open. In quotes, we'll say get in capital letters. This is passing a command over to the web browser to the app, get. Get, get this data. From where, comma, quotes, social.json. comma true. At the moment I forget what that true does, but it's important. So here is actually what we're trying to say, okay, we, we have the ability to connect to some file or some web server, basically. Here now let's try to open a connection to that file. So get which one? That file. Let me check your spelling. My so file. Mm, could be the it. asynchronous data transfer. The asynchronous data transfer. That that could be most likely it. Um, yeah, I have to look that up exactly, but that um, that could very be, very well be it. Asynchronous or synchronous data. Um, yeah, I have to double check it. Now is Git capital because that's your choice, or that was supposed to. That is how that's supposed to be. That is an HTTP request. That is a built-in, you know, HTTP 1.1 or whatever. It is a standard. We can get the data. It has to be caps like that. And so my file is social.json. I spelled it right there. I spelled it right there. Okay, JSON true. Okay, so. Uh, and then we need one more item at the end here. XHR dot send and there we're typing null that one again I've got to double check exactly what that one does but uh, that one um, this whole thing that we're doing here is to be able to try to to connect to the file basically that's why this can get complex because we've got our project that exists on our device 
and all of the amazing stuff that Instagram does and Pinterest and Snapchat and Peach and all of these apps, all that amazing stuff, there's so much server stuff going on behind the scenes without us even paying attention. I just click a button for like, but what it did was it ran, you know, 200 commands to connect to the server, check if it exists, check your username just for the like. And then the server gives you a response back that says OK. So then that OK will cause on screen for the heart to turn red. So all of that stuff that we see it happening so easily that we take for granted is a lot of this kind of stuff. So, so here we are so far. What we want to do at this point, now we'll back up to the function. So this, this was an alternate way. Um, we've done function, the name of the function, and defined it. This is an alternate way to do it, where we're saying onload is a function that we're creating attached to XHR. And yes, there are details about all of that behind the scenes, exactly what it means and such. But again, don't worry about it. Here we're just trying to load that data and do something with it. Here we're saying, trying to, let's try to get the data. If we did successfully load the data, then do something with it. And what I want to do is I want to display at least one of those pictures on screen. So we're almost there. Let's back up inside of line 17, inside of the onload function. If this uh, tried to load it, it'll, it'll give me the data. If I did connect to the database, it'll give me the data. So I want to store that in a variable. This can be anything we want, but we'll use response obj object, response object equals um, the data. There's a technical aspect of JSON in that depending how you're using it, uh, it's it can be an object or it can be serialized data. Uh, in short here, what we're about to do here is, okay, we're getting this data, and just to make sure that we can deal with it, we're going to sort of convert it into a format of JavaScript that we know should behave like JavaScript. So here we're saying JSON, all in capital letters, dot parse. Let's process that data. Suddenly a bunch of data is coming into this HTML file. If all of this worked, a bunch of data gets thrown in here. Let's parse it. We're going to use the JSON object with the parse um, method. We're going to convert the data into JSON format, put it in here so that then we can actually use it in, in plain old JavaScript. Specifically in parse, xhr.response text. So there's that xhr again. We created a shorthand. .onload.open.send.response.text. Basically the text in the JSON file. Let's parse it, let's convert it so that we can deal with it and then put that in this, in this variable. <coughs> no. We'll test the result right here. Let's say, okay, if this worked uh, let's display something on screen. If this worked, hopefully this will allow us to display on screen um, this information. So what we'll do is let's say um, the jQuery the jQuery selector of uh, div result dot HTML let's um, have it display uh, response obj response object dot social zero dot name and 
Okay. Um, so on the div on screen, Darishima, we saw this before. We made it display the word clicked. Here we're saying um, in the response object, in the data that I got out of trying to open the database, go to the zeroth position in the social uh, field and give me that name. Save it and run it. Press the button. And you should get YouTube. Hey, It'll only tell you YouTube because that's all we programmed it to. But if you go back and change zero to one, you get Vine. If you do two, you get Twitter. If it didn't work, uh, if you get a little message in your console not well formed, don't worry about that. But if you get other kinds of error messages like no result, let's. Uh, no, no, we're gonna take we're gonna take a break just to make sure we're all on on all our footing here. So there is a lot here that could go wrong. But let me just show, show of hands how many of you did it work. It did it or did that it did work. <laughs> okay, uh, let's pause and take a quick break. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. I'm going to put my code in the network folder so far in case you want to see it, and then I'll help you out. We'll be back in 10 minutes.